Shalom, 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 and shalom. I'm not going to do a normal video that I usually do. Um, really got sick of arguing with um, what I define as pagan Christians. There's no real hope for them. They don't want to listen. They don't want to learn. They don't want to find out that they've been lied to all their life. They just want to do what they want to do. And their only destination is a place they don't want to go. This is to respond to someone who wanted to know about Sarai and myself. Chris, there's just no short answer about Sarai. Now, I have said this in writing in numerous places, and of course, Sarai knows the whole story. I say story, not being fabrication, but um, it's long and drawn out. The first time when I was real young, now I'm going to truncate a lot, but uh, something disturbed me, frightened me. And I was like six, seven years old. And I was frightened to death. And it was late at night. And I was in my bed. And I saw something that I wasn't supposed to see. So, frightened out of my mind. Uh, I'll just call him right now a friend. Uh, came and helped me out. I was always there and watched over me because at that age, uh, being what I was then, I needed a lot of people watching out for me. wasn't exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. When I got to about 13, which is the age of ascension, I went through a baptism, I mean, at that time I was Baptist because that's what my family were at the time. And um, I underwent the baptism. Now, when I went into the water, it felt like a long time. You know, normally it's like down and up, down and up, down and up. And I've seen this. But it was like I was held under and time froze. I heard music. Of course, I inquired about it later. They said there was no music being played. Just a figment of your imagination. But I heard music, and I was all a cappella. No, no instruments, no nothing. Just voices. In a language I didn't understand. Later on, I ended up having a conversation with one good person, my friend. And, um, uh, we just want to say another person whom I would never want to meet. And the conversation was about my future, essentially. Things that yet to happen or should happen or could happen or every variation you can think of. So, after that encounter, and I'm going to fast forward some more because it goes into some spirituality that I don't really want to discuss. Um, it's nothing wrong with it, I just don't want to talk about it. Um, I started seeing the images of this woman. And she was older, older than my mother was at the time. And she had long, curly, blonde hair and the deepest blue eyes you've ever seen. And for some reason, I felt a great, deep kinship to this person. Uh, like being drawn. And, um... Uh, 
I had dreams about her throughout life. And I always said, you know, because being young, you try to date other people, and you always sit there and say, oh, man, it's one of my dreams. Why can't I not find somebody like that person? Because the person deep inside was deeply loving, caring. Um, there was a bond there that I could never explain. But I kept seeing her in my dreams. Well, I saw a lot of things through that time, most I won't describe. And when I was sitting, actually in this place where I'm in now, this is my parents' place. So I lost my job back in 2008 and I'm just recovering. And I'm just getting ready to start pursuing the house. But I was upstairs at the kitchen table up there. Actually, that table right there that you can't see. And um, I was dropped with a vision again of this woman. Same thing. Long, blonde, curly hair, deep blue eyes, a soft voice. felt a connection that can't be described okay now but it froze me I mean I, I was I was not there for a while watching this and in the well the vision I was at a place which is like a pavilion where you get the hard polished wooden floor and you had white posts coming up and it was like under a gazebo type of roof and I had a feeling that there was some type of dance party something there and I pulled her clothes I think we were going to dance or something and I tried to take her um, shawl off and she slapped my head and slapped my hand and said no you're not doing that so at the end of the dream I was looking into those deep blue eyes and I felt like I was home. And of course, she's older than what my mother was at the time. Years passed. Years. And I saw her off and on throughout time in my visions. When I was 35, I had my first heart attack. I got out of the hospital. I was on convalescent leave after surgery. And uh, I just wanted out of the place. I mean, imagine being cooped up, you know, on and on and on. You just want out of there. So I was just heading out to get, you know, go out, do something just really for 10, 15 minutes, just so I can get out, just for a few moments. So I went over, turned off the TV, made a turn to the door, and then the I was dropped to the ground with another vision. I saw the same woman again, long, blonde, curly hair. She was wearing a white robe, holding a staff, not in a typical way that you're thinking of. It was actually elevated above the ground. She wouldn't let it touch the ground. But something happened. It was like all of a sudden she just snapped and got angry. Really angry. She took the staff and jammed it to the ground full force. Like, that's it. She got up off the chair she was sitting on, which was like a, a marble bench-like thing. Walked up, still holding the staff so it would not touch ground. Walked forward, down a path, turned right, and then through some hedges I couldn't see anymore. Then it was over. But in that dream, she wasn't older like I was been seeing her all my life. She was young, vibrant. Um, Attractive. And the, and the young, romantic, um, 
sexual type of way. Very attractive. We ended up having a relationship later, later on with another woman. I had a son whom I've never seen. And that's been some contentions with Sarai and myself. She doesn't understand why I can't just go see my son. It's a very sticky situation. We'll skip it now. Had a few others. You know, basically, I just gave up looking for this magical woman that never could find. I mean, I looked and I've looked and I've looked all my life for this one woman. Never could find her. So, I ended up running into this woman years later when I had to come back here. Because, you know, I lost everything I ever owned. I mean, I lost everything. I mean, I was dropped to my knees and it was nothing. So I spent most of the money last time. I had time before that in a recession to survive on my own with very little income coming in with a standard output for two and a half years. So most of my savings were stopped. So I ended up finding a woman right here on YouTube. And she spoke an off English type of thing. Uh, middle English, really. So I figured that she was some type of lost um, uh, language teacher, you know, ancient language teacher at some university or something. And uh, I felt drawn to her for some reason. I didn't really understand why. So, in the month of October, I think around the 15th, 18th, something like that, we agreed to make a goal of it, to try. So, she tried to explain her life to me, I explained my life to her. Uh, for her, it was in writing, for me, it was in video. Um, we had a lot of back and forth fights from time to time. One of the fights was just to speak to her normally. It caused like a month long fight for me to even talk to her. I don't want to know. And then we had fights about other stupid things like uh, she was trying to keep her location hidden because she said she was stalked once. And she told me everything I, need, I, I could ever hear. And from everything she told me, laid everything down in perfect geometric layouts to her location. So I shot her location. It took me five minutes to figure it out. Because I wasn't trying at the time. Just saying, if I wanted to find you, I can. Here's where you are. Here's where you are. Here's the church you said you go to. Here's the post office you go to. Here's where this place is, and that place is, and this place is. And gave it to her on a map in private where she could see it. And she got angry, of course. She thought I hacked her computer and a bunch of other things. And I don't have to. What's not generally known is, although it may not be apparent, uh, my IQ is not exactly on the low end. It is generally centralized in a very key area. And that is logic. And I still argue it even to, to, today, mathematics. It just comes natural. I just know. And there's other times I just know things without knowing. I mean, hearing about it or somebody tell me about it or uh, reading about it or whatever. I just know it's happening. I just know. Her and I fought off and on for a long time. The original agreement was we would complete the betrothal. Uh, betrothal, whatever term you want to use it. Uh, which is usually for a widow, which is what she is, which is 
supposed to be three months, but she wanted a year. So she felt safe. So I agreed. We got up to that point, and it was the year mark, and then she says, oh, my mother's sick, we can't do it now. Not really want to take anybody from their uh, family members in a bad time. Uh, no, I, actually, no, that was six months. Sorry, that was six months. Six months from what I'm supposed to meet, see, date, buy engagement ring, yada yada. And then she said, no, my mother's sick. And I need to be with her. Sorry, just the way it is. And like I said, I don't like to take somebody away from their loved one in a bad time. So I agreed. I said, all right, in a year I'll be there and we'll finish everything up. I'll finish the agreement. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention. When she did finally send me a, a, an image of her, um, it matched what I saw my entire life. And that was a fight, too. It was a fight and argument to even just see that. And I knew when I saw it, it was her. So, like I said, we had to fight at the six month mark. Mark, which is where I was supposed to have gone down there and officially do what I was supposed to do in order to set up the marriage. Um, we're supposed to get together at the um, year mark to actually do the marriage. Again, my mother's sick. It's like it always times out. Every time I'm supposed to complete my word and her to complete hers, her mother was sick and the dog was dying and cat was ill and it just timed out now honestly the events didn't occur for her, but I am saying it, it is awful odd that each time we're supposed to come to be somebody was dying or somebody was sick so I wasn't happy about it there was a fight Eventually, we made an amends, and we agreed to push it six months, and that would have been it. So that would be the 18th month mark. So we get to the 18th month mark. I tell her I am setting up to buy an airline tickets. I have the money for the ring. I plan to do this. This is what I want to do. And yada, yada. I will see you probably within three weeks because I need to, you know, get the time off approved airline tickets, um, motel room set up, hotel, whatever it was going to be there, and then I would be there. So, what happened was, is, um, I went to bed that night, she was sort of quiet about it, woke up next morning, heard somebody else I know, his name is John. You know John as well. Uh, that's um, Blackbeard. Uh, they were having some type of argument. Uh, I didn't want to participate. I just didn't want part of it. I told her I love you. I'll talk to you later tonight. I'm going, to, I'm going out to get something to eat, which, which was the Waffle House. Right? That's what I did at that time. Now I'll do something different, but then it was Waffle House. So... I left here, went to the Waffle House. She said she loved me too, yada, yada, yada. And then some, the next one was, how dare you, or something along those lines. Who are you to say these things to me? I wasn't even here. And then the third one was, I never want to see you again. Since she's been playing me throughout the entire time, after she has given her word openly, uh, after she has publicly accepted her role as wife, which according to Judea law makes her my wife, just once done, it's done. Unless one of us commits adultery. And I haven't. And I don't think she has either. Then it is already so. 
there's just, when you go through the, the betrothal, at the end of it, there is the final deal where the families come together and the marriage is completed. And like I said, her and I fall about all kind of other nonsense. And I didn't really want to make a decision because I didn't know if I was going to be here, if I was going to be there. I didn't know. So I'm not willing to commit to something unless I knew. Because, you know, when she can get mad, so you, I'm making up things. I will be there at the two year mark, rain or shine, hell or high water. Right? And then two years comes, and then all of a sudden, no, I can't do it again. Mom's sick. You got to come here, and this is after I buy a house. I can't just pull up stakes. So I wanted myself to be completely fluid. So that if she needed me there, I'd go there. Because it don't matter to my job. My job, I do it right there. I don't go anywhere. No building, no nothing. I work from there. I got a phone, I have a computer, that's all I need. So I can do the job there. So, it got ugly going back and forth. I felt offended, insulted. Um, didn't do what my friend told me to do. I actually did the opposite. Because my temper was in full-fledged. So I've had it. Three cancellations and playing games throughout the entire thing made me angry beyond belief. Because I've had props like this before. Where people would say one thing and then do the exact opposite. Well, I'm sorry. This is just the way I want to do it. Because it's better this way for me. I don't accept that as a reason anymore. I accept that as a person being a cop. If it can't do what they claim then they are lying through their teeth either lying when they made the agreement or lying afterwards and that is also biblical so I was in full fledged anger so I brought up a few things she says this and nothing was private it was all public information I just made sure it was well known that was a mistake So, my friend told me he was displeased with my um, reaction that I should have listened to him and said things won't be so easy. Things may not even be the way you should be. And that's where we stand. I haven't spoken to her in two years. She says things like I'm stalking her and hacked her computer and all kind of other outlandish lies without realizing that I have a high IQ and it's just information. I get information, I put two and two together which makes four and four and eight makes twelve and just adding information together. And then I got the pattern, then I can take the pattern and come up with the basic and then from the basic to the advanced information and the advanced into a full layout deal and it doesn't take me long that was one of the gifts I was given when I was baptized at the age of 13 it was the wisdom of Solomon there's more there's always more but I don't want to actually drag or dredge up certain things but we haven't spoken in two years but I am told to make things right with her I am told to marry her I am told that my word to her is as binding as her word is to me 
and there's no escape. That's the one thing that the uh, pagan Christians can't really comprehend. They only view the law of the land, they don't view the law of God. They like to think the law of God is gone, that it doesn't exist anymore. That everything in what they like to call the Old Testament or the Old Covenant is null and void. The only thing that was null and void was living by the law to be saved. That's the only thing that died. And that's written in Jeremiah 31, 31. Or was it 31, 32? Yeah, it's around there. So, by biblical law, the law of God himself, since she also claimed it publicly, I claimed it publicly, it is already so. The only thing that has been done is the, confirm is the uh, confirmation of it. May happen, may not happen. What I see, based on the events that have happened, is not very likely. But I can't walk out on her, I can't leave her. At the same time, I don't trust her. Because she's already proven herself to be untrustworthy. I believe you call that a catch-22 situation. Damned if you do, and damned if you don't. But that's where we stand. So, we'll see what happens. I've seen the possibilities. And I've seen what the likely one is. And it doesn't turn out well. I still go the same way I was supposed to go. That's solid. That's not ever changing. My death is north of Mount Moriah. It's called Mount Tabor. And that's where I die. I'll be about 73 years old when I die. It can't be changed. That's your answer there, Chris, and I won't say much more. I don't see a reason to. But I should have kept my temper. That is the only sin that I have actually made against her. Because what she never realized was, is I was mistreated in my life. And she knew all the stories, but she never listened. So because I was angry at her for being scared, which is the truth. <sighs> Makes the whole thing a mess. Well, it's um, Shabbat, and I'm sorry for making this long. You have a good day, Chris. Take care. Be blessed in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. He's a Christ in Irish. And um, have a good night. Shabbat Shalom.